This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Dare to open your eyes to all that is around you and within you. Have you ever looked, really looked at and studied a blade of grass, a morning dewdrop, the fragrant petal of a flower? There's an awe-inspiring beauty in these things, yet so few take the time to savor and delight in such marvels which abound on every side. Multiplied millions of human beings have become so accustomed to the starry skies at night, the pink and purple glow of sunrise and sunset, the years and the seasons, the winds and the rains, that they have lost sight of the incredible beauty of these things and of life and of this very world itself and all there is to discover and to know on this planet but only with the eyes of spiritual discernment can one perceive the real beauties of existence. There is more to you than lies between your haircut and your toenails. You are a child of the divine. Your soul longs to live by spiritual values, and nothing but spiritual things can truly satisfy the inner you. When you're hungry for food, you will not be satisfied by reading a magazine. When you're thirsty for water, you won't be satisfied by watching television or going to a movie. The hunger for food, the thirst for water, can only be satisfied by the eating of food and the drinking of water, not by anything else. And the craving in your soul for spiritual things, likewise, can only be satisfied by spiritual things and nothing else available in this entire world, not power, wealth, fame, position, or prestige, nothing else will satisfy your soul. As the old philosopher once said to the vain and conceited young man, someday you're going to find yourself, and when you do, you'll be very disappointed. Yet the joy of life consists not in finding yourself, but in finding your God, and then at last you will feel at home in this universe, at one with the sun and the moon and the stars, a citizen of a friendly cosmos. Until then, it's like wearing your shirt and your pants backward. You'll never feel completely comfortable and at ease. The ultimate unhappiness of human life is the unhappiness of the unsatisfied soul. You may acquire everything else which this world has to offer. Clothes, luxury, properties, cars, jets, maids, butlers, and the supposed best of everything. But until you find God, you haven't found the best of anything. And nobody else may perceive this need in you. It is not apparent from external appearances. You've perhaps seen pictures of the royal guards standing like wooden soldiers in front of Buckingham Palace in England. A man will stand motionless at attention for hours at his post, seemingly impervious to sun, rain, insects, and curious tourists. But you know he has an itch somewhere and wishes he could take off his boot or pull up his pant leg or open his shirt collar and scratch it. Still outwardly, he is the portrait of dignified composure. That may be you, ostensibly, utterly in command of your life, but inwardly tormented by the burning itching of spiritual dissatisfaction. You will never feel at ease with life and at one with the universe until you take care of that. And regardless of how you look on the outside, you know how you feel on the inside. You may think you have everything, but you don't have anything until you have God. And God is so near that all you have to do is begin to talk with God. It's a bit as if you'd been riding the same subway, bus, or streetcar all your life. And every morning and evening had been standing next to the same person but had never struck up a conversation. But parables and analogies fail when attempting to describe how near and how available God is to you if you will only reach out to God and reach in to God. It's not like someone on a bus or a next-door neighbor you've never met. It's more like a wonderful mother or father who has wanted every good thing for your life but whom for quirkish reasons of your own 
you have repeatedly rejected and turned away from time and time and time again. Yet God is so instantly accessible if you would but seek for God. His very Spirit is there with you, nearer than your next heart throb, pulse beat, or breathing. God loves you with a love which will not let you go, and God longs for fellowship with you. And if you will turn to God this very moment, you will find him to the joy of your heart and the satisfaction of your soul. You long for that. You yearn for that. You need that. Augustine wrote, O God, thou hast made us for thyself, and the heart of man is restless until it finds its rest in thee. The world-famous Harvard University psychologist, Dr. Eric Erickson, described the most crucial point in human psychological development as the identity crisis. It is this. How do you answer the question, who am I? Do you think of yourself as a mere evolutionary accident? Just dust and clay, protein and protoplasm, random genetics in haphazard assemblage, a mere worm of the earth with no higher reason for being alive. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Just two eyes, a nose, and an omnivorous mouth. You are, in truth, a highly differentiated physical creation of all sorts of cells and organs, a skeleton of bones so structurally strong that you can lift more than your own body weight yet without cracking or snapping your skeleton. You have specialized organs for digestion and assimilation and elimination and respiration, lungs which take oxygen from the air and infuse it into your red blood cells for the nourishment of your entire body, a liver and kidneys extracting toxins from your bloodstream, white blood cells fighting infections, a skin adaptable for living in every climate, from the hottest to the coldest, feet for walking, teeth and tongue for chewing and swallowing, digestive juices, reproductive organs and hormones, and the ability to pass on your own genetics to your offspring. Could it all have been merely an accident? Think of your sense of smell, your olfactory organs. You can, without any problem, instantaneously distinguish between the scent of new-mown hay, bacon frying, hickory logs on a fireplace hearth, and an ocean breeze. You can recognize and identify thousands of fragrances, sounds, colors, and textures. With your prehensile hand, with its marvelously designed opposable thumb and fingers, you can identify at a touch the difference between earth and stone, a flower petal and a two-penny nail, a wool overcoat and a cantaloupe, all by your sense of touch. Such a remarkably constructed being you are. Could it all have been mere chance and happenstance, a great cosmic accident, that you're here designed as you are? Of course not. For you are a son or a daughter of the living God. God created you to be not only what the Greeks described as a rational animal, a thinking and reasoning being, you are a spiritual being as well as an intellectual and physical being. You were created not only to be able to touch and see and hear and smell and taste. You were created able to think and reason and more than that, to perceive in your soul the higher spiritual things of life, truth and beauty and goodness and love. Loving God and loving others. Above all else, you were created to love. And the experience of loving and being loved is the most satisfying experience you can know. And the most satisfying love you can know is the love of God. Loving and being loved by God. Because God loves you. You are a child of God, a son or daughter of the deity, and growth in the knowledge and certitude of that will become an ever deeper spiritual satisfaction in your life. God's love for you is enduring. Nothing can extinguish it. 
No sickness, unhappiness, disappointment, tragedy, conflict, disaster, confusion, betrayal, wounding, mistakes, misfortune, isms, schisms, or false teaching. Nothing can extinguish God's eternal love for you. You may turn your back on God, forget about God for a season, and wander in wayward ways for days and even years or decades, yet still, God loves you and longs for true friendship and fellowship with you. God cares for you with the longing, loving heart of a good parent, a caring, compassionate mother or father who wants only the best for the child and who yearns for a better and deeper relationship with that child, with you. And there is no mystery to the resolution of God's longing for you and your loneliness for God, no sacred rituals, elaborate ceremonies, long liturgies or ordeals of self-abasing penance are required, none of that. No, simply turn to God with all your heart, this very moment, right now, as you're listening to this worldwide radio broadcast right now, while it's on your mind, and you've been thinking about it for these last few moments, decide here and now to settle the matter once and for all and whisper in your soul the prayer that you want God, and you need God, and you love God, and that whatever your past may have been, you want God in your future and to find God's strength and love and wisdom, peace and purpose for your life. And this very moment, you will find God now. And your life will begin in the twinkling of a second, the transformation of a lifetime, as you begin to live, really to live, as the son or daughter of God you've always in your soul longed to be, and in truth, by faith, you can discover you really are. For free literature on the spiritual life, on these very things I've been discussing on this broadcast, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, and Other Literature. Just write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.